刻むでハモンのビート Over the years, I've spoken a lot about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and its creator, Hirohiko Araki. As expected from someone who created a series like JoJo, Araki is a really eccentric guy, and on this channel, I've gone over only a fraction of all the interesting things about him. Some of my absolute favorite stories about Araki have actually come from his wife, Asami Araki. The two have been married for over 30 years now and have two daughters. Like her husband, Asami is also quite the character, and it's been noted that the two are very similar. So, in this video, I'd just like to take a look at Asami's interviews and the stories that have been told about their relationship by her and Araki, as well as the surprising ways she's actually had influence over JoJo itself. In November of 2009, Asami held a live interview at the University of Tokyo's School Festival, which is where the majority of the information in this video comes from. A personal account of the event was posted on atmarkjojo.org, which was a comprehensive JoJo fan blog of the time. This interview also tells us about Asami's common nickname, Chami. The interview covers a lot, so I'll try to go over the information in roughly chronological order. According to Asami, the two first met sometime in the late 1980s when she attended her friend's marriage interview. If you don't know what that is, it's a kind of matchmaking custom where two people are formally introduced for the possibility of marriage. Sitting across from her was Araki, who was a friend of the potential groom. She says that she immediately clicked with him, but apparently Araki was totally oblivious and wasn't thinking about love at all. She says that she got Araki's number and that three months later, they were married. The next thing Asami talks about is one of my all time favorite Araki stories, the one about their first date. One day, Araki was on his way to the gym pool when he was asked out by Asami over the telephone. He told her to meet him at the pool, and when she arrived, he said, I'll be swimming back and forth in the 25 meter line a few times, so just play around here. And then she sat awkwardly by the side of the pool by herself while he swam around. According to Araki, the two got married in 1990 while part 3 was ongoing. Shortly after, their new marriage already had an influence on the story of JoJo. Araki had been married for about two years when he first created the character Yukiko in Part 4. He says that his experience being married altered the way that he writes, since instead of just drawing women for the sake of it, he tried to draw a side of women that you normally don't get to see. Although I don't think Asami was quite as extreme as Yukiko, I do think it's a pretty funny comparison. Another story Asami shares is one from about 10 years into their marriage. She said that she felt like she was living with a middle schooler since Araki was actually something of a prankster. Apparently, as an adult, Araki would still do ding dong ditches on his neighbors. She says that despite this, though, the people of the neighborhood loved him, but older people would still call out to him as if he were a child. Another thing Asami notes is how shy Araki is. In one story, she had her friend come over, and he opened the door halfway before saying, ah, a stranger, and then closing the door without coming out. At the 2003 JoJo in Paris exhibition, Araki was worried that nobody from Japan would show up. But then, once the Shueisha staff began arriving, his shyness started to be cured. Nowadays, he'll invite manga artists over for parties, although Asami notes that mangaka are actually pretty strange people. Another thing Asami inspired in the JoJo manga is the famous scene in Steel Ball Run when Scarlet Valentine asks Lucy to sit on her. This doesn't really come across in the fan translation, but in Japanese, Scarlet basically asks Lucy to give her a press fest. Someone actually asked Araki about the origin of this phrase in a 2007 QA session at Tohoku University. He says that his wife would sometimes charge at him and say, It's press fest time, it's press fest time. Asami also mentions the press fest in her interview a couple years later. She says that the press fest is like a professional wrestling move where a wrestler would hurl their body as an attack over and over again. She says that back when Araki was a prankster, he would have her stand at the entrance and then take one. When asked by the audience to see what this looked like, she said it would be impossible. The funniest thing about this is that the accounts seem to be conflicting. In Araki's story, she seems to be the one doing it, and in her story, it almost seems like Araki is. So it looks like they actually both do the press fest. It's also funny that it sounds somewhat sexual at first, but really it seems to be more like them just inexplicably doing flying body slams at each other, and not like the actual scene that ended up in the manga. After mentioning the press fest in my recent Fun Facts video, some people pointed out that they believe this is a reference to the real wrestling move, the Thez Press, named after the American professional wrestler Lou Thez. 
Now, pro wrestling is pretty popular in Japan, so while I don't think a reference like this would be out of place, it actually isn't the case here. If we look at times when things in English are referenced in JoJo, they actually use the English names. For example, the world is Zawarudo, and not a direct translation of the English word world. In this case, it is entirely in Japanese and doesn't sound anything like Thez Press. In Japanese, the phrase is Apakusai, or it's a pressure festival. It essentially means a festival of pressure, i.e. the pressure of Lucy sitting on Scarlet. In Japanese, the festival can also just mean a lot, so a lot of pressure. Searches for the term in Japanese only bring up results from JoJo, so it seems like the term itself was coined by them and isn't based on a pre-existing move. When the Louvre Art Museum was chosen as the theme for Rohan at the Louvre, Asami and Araki visited the Louvre for two days and were allowed to enter the museum after it was completely closed. She said that they were allowed to view the Mona Lisa up to a centimeter away, and were also allowed to touch the Nike of Samothrace. Now, over a decade later, we've gotten the Rohan at the Louvre movie, and similarly, they were also allowed to film inside the museum when it was completely empty. Speaking of the Mona Lisa, a common online joke at the time was that Araki bore somewhat of a resemblance to the painting. Apparently, Asami and Araki were both aware of this comparison. Interestingly, in the Louvre story itself, Okuyasu compares Rohan to the Mona Lisa, which may have been a self-aware reference to this from Araki. Asami also referenced how well Araki ages, and said that his secret is doing yoga and always wearing sunscreen. She says that he practically avoids the sun at every opportunity. In 2009, Asami held her interview at the university. The program director, Hiroki Tarai, reached out to her since they were friends from her school days. She heard about it through a mutual friend of theirs, but didn't want to attend because of the large crowd. However, Araki convinced her to try it once. She notes that Araki didn't attend, since he'd actually have stomach problems from nervousness if he did. She said that the day before the lecture, he said a prayer for her at the shrine and joked that he would scatter flyers around the university. When asked where Araki was during the event, she said he was probably on a walk. The lecture was in front of a crowd of 300 and mostly involved taking questions from the audience as well as sharing stories about Araki. She also had some videos prepared. First was a video letter from the couple and Masanori Morita, one of Araki's friends and the author of the manga Rookies. She also shared a video titled Hirohiko Araki's Cooking Class, which showed Araki cooking by himself. It began with Araki saying, and now I will cook, which apparently got a laugh from the crowd. The menu was sweet and sour pork with black vinegar and a side of broccoli, and shrimp and Japanese scallops with linguine. Asami went on to describe how Araki writes manga. She says that he often listens to different music depending on what he's drawing, something Araki himself has shared in the past. She also mentioned one day a few years prior when she brought him some tea, and when she opened the door, Araki exclaimed in a strange voice, Doya, and lifted up his brush as if he were possessed. So she shut the door and went back to what she was doing. She also mentions how Araki incorporates things from his life into the manga. She says that she'll often read something and think, this is what I was just talking about the other day. Araki said that he draws manga like he's writing a personal diary. Asami notes that she and Araki are very similar, and she describes him like a businesswoman who is a friend and confidant. He loves candy and sweet foods, and as most JoJo fans know, he's very knowledgeable in fashion. Asami also brought presents for the audience. An Avdol Super Action statue was given to the president of the school. A Kakuen one was given to the person who traveled the farthest to the event. This went to someone who came all the way from Aomori, which is about 8 hours away by car. A collection of figures went to someone with the same initials as Araki. A Jotaro figure went to someone who decided to read Jojo because of the lecture. Finally, an SBR glass was given to someone who has a pet named Iggy. The event closed with an appearance of Mr. Kajipon, an instructor for the Jojo Posing School. This was a fan event held at the university where people gathered to learn how to Jojo pose. It seems like this goes back for quite a while, starting in 2002. It continued being held at the school, and in 2006, Araki himself even collaborated. Asami and Kojipon demonstrated the poses on stage. After the one and a half hour event, five or six of Asami's friends came out to give her bouquets of flowers. The right side of the classroom was decorated with flowers from Araki to his wife. Right next to them were also flowers from Shinosuke of the Japanese hip-hop group Sold Out, who frequently collaborated with Araki. During the interview, Asami was asked if she had any plans to write about her life with Araki. She said that since she wasn't a celebrity, there are no plans. 
It seems that since then, that's still the case, and this was her main public appearance for many years. However, she has been mentioned a few more times. Around 2006, Asami frequented the same beauty salon as the members of the all-female mangaka group Clamp. They're quite well known as the creators of the manga series Cardcaptor Sakura and XXXholic. Jojo fans might know them from their early days of creating fan doujinshi, since they're also the ones behind Clamp in Wonderland Jojo's Bizarre Married Life, which I went over before in a video. Asami became friends with them and eventually set up an interview between Araki and one of its members, Subaki Nakoi. In a 1997 interview with Bubka Magazine, the interviewer had spoken with Araki's wife before and she relayed the story of Araki being hated by the neighborhood cats after he had scared them away from his garden with an air rifle. In 2016, during the shooting of the Diamond is Unbreakable live-action movie, Asami accompanied Araki on their visit to the set. While there, the two tried to cheer up the young actors. That visit also gave us an amazing quote when Araki told the director, Takashi Miike, Every film belongs to its director. Feel free to destroy the original universe if you need to, which apparently gave Miike chills. One recent mention of Araki's wife you may have seen is this Reddit post, claiming it's a picture of Araki with his wife and mother. This post ended up getting over 10,000 upvotes, however, it is completely incorrect. The woman on the right is Asami, not his mother. The one in the middle is actually Arata Tomori, a famous Japanese dermatologist. One more thing Asami is notable for is throwing parties. In 2018, she had a year-end Christmas party where she invited many of her friends, a lot of which are singers. Many photos of these events can be found on her friends' blogs. As we can see, many of them showed up with JoJo-themed cosplays. The party was decorated with some impressive JoJo balloon animals of Star Platinum, Pet Shop, and Sex Pistols. Later in 2019, Asami also had a birthday party. The venue this time was also well decorated, including a life-size cardboard cutout of Asami. There were also cakes and snacks decorated with images from JoJo. Most notably, we can see a macaron with the Scarlet Valentine Press Fest panel printed on it, showing that this is still a running joke between the couple many years later. That's about everything there is to say about Asami. Her live interview, which acted as the main source for this video, is one of my favorite pieces of behind-the-scenes JoJo media. But I initially hadn't even known much about it other than the first date story. I'm glad that I decided to look into it further, since I actually got to hear a lot of amazing little stories for the first time. Like I said before, Asami and Araki are both very similar and interesting people, and I would actually like to see her come back and write a book or something chronicling their relationship, like some wives of other creators have. Hopefully you also enjoyed the stories and learned something new from this video. If there's a similar topic you'd like to see me go over in a future video, feel free to comment it down below. To stay updated on future videos, I hope that you'll subscribe and click the notification bell. You can also join the Hum and Beat Discord to be updated when new videos release. Finally, I'd appreciate if you help support the channel on Patreon. There you can receive Discord perks, as well as the opportunity to submit questions. This video's question comes from Stario. They ask if I collect JoJo figures and if there's any I particularly like the look of. Well, I do have quite a lot of JoJo figures, but I'm sort of particular. And while I do have many figures of the more well-known JoJo characters like Jotaro and Dio, I actually prefer finding more obscure merchandise. Of the main line of figures, my favorites would be King Crimson and Diego. And I'm greatly anticipating the Steel Ball Run and Jojolian Super Action statues. Of course, I also love Nendoroids and have some for my favorite JoJo characters. I recently pre-ordered the Diavolo Nendoroid, although I'm more interested in the Doppio part of it. Other than that, I also have this Jotaro figure and plaque, which came with the Japanese limited edition of All-Star Battle, which I received as a gift. My most treasured JoJo merch, though, would be some things you may have never seen. First is this little figure of Lucy Steele. Lucy is one of, if not my favorite character in JoJo, and this is the only figure of her that exists up to this point, so I had to get it. The other is this full-size hand puppet of Charlotte, the Prison Warden's puppet from Part 6. This was more recent since it was merch for the Stone Ocean anime. Then we have the Real Action Heroes series, which were a line of posable figures dressed with real fabric released from 2010 to 2012. The first one I got was this amazing figure of Cool Shock BT, one of Araki's older manga. This is the only BT merch out there, so I had to get it, and it's very high quality. Then there's my holy grail of JoJo merch, the Dead Man's Questions Kira figure. 
You can probably already tell that I love this story and this version of Kira since I've made it the profile picture of my channel. Since it's so old, this figure often goes for around $400 on sites like eBay. However, I was able to find an amazing deal and found it for only around $200, so I couldn't resist getting it. My next most anticipated figure is also releasing soon, the SH Figuarts of Rohan from the live-action film. I was very excited when they announced that they'd be making this since I'm a huge fan of the Rohan drama series. The final result is actually very realistic, and it does a good job of capturing Issei Takahashi's likeness. After that, I'm also hoping we'll see a figure of Izumi in the future. If you want to submit a question, you can join the Patreon at any tier and leave it under my Pages Member Post tab. There's no limit to how many questions you can ask, so feel free to put as many as you want. Thank you for watching. This is the part of the video where I thank my $5 and up patrons. Thank you to Alex Ramirez, Doorbell, Crayon, Rigovids, Zucato, Pumpkin Doge, Marrow, Almighty Korth, Gatling Grove, Lime Jinjo, 17 Hit Combo, Sponge Cake, Kagext, Feliciano Rabaja, Rayana Meme, Christian McDonough, Navi, Emmanuel Etienne, Pulse Dog, Great Riek, Carmotrina, Hunter Gill, Adam Grogan, Zach Greenfield, FIFO, Faro, Rob Goliath, Jacob Smith, and Professor Foosball.